Hey guys, what is up? Awesome to sauce here. Hope you guys are having a great day and welcome to another video where we're gonna be sticking our necks where it probably doesn't belong. So recently, there's been a lot of news and I've heard about the news and I think it would be really stupid if I didn't make a video about it because it seems like people are getting banned without doing literally anything wrong. But I also thought that what this does, it also like illuminates a real problem with King's Isle that I thought I would talk about in this video as well. Today we're going to be talking about people who have gotten their accounts banned because they were mistakenly thought of to be from embargoed countries. Now this is a crazy ass situation for sure, but I'm making this video because all I know is that if I spent 10 years on an account and got falsely banned, Especially in the way that these people got banned, I would be extremely, extremely pissed off. And I would hope someone would make a video about it. So without further ado, let's get right into what I think is a very sticky situation. So a few days ago, uh, people who have been, I assume, playing Wiz for a very long time, they got banned and then they received this message from King's Isle in their email about why they got banned. So I'm going to read it. Uh, and it basically said, we're very sorry that you're disappointed. Already gotta stop right there. We're sorry that you're disappointed. Come on, come, who's writing this? I'm a. Hey, come on, man. That's like saying I'm sorry that you're offended. That's like you can't. I'm. This has nothing to do with the video, but I think that wording is already kind of sus. I'm. Just, I'll be. Oh, I'll be annoyed. Anyways, let's continue. We appreciate all of our loyal players. Unfortunately, due to governmental restrictions. And as outlined in our terms of use, access from an embargoed country is denied. So then they quoted the part of their terms of use. Basically, I'm going to not read the whole thing. But basically what it is, is that if the U.S. has an embargo against a certain country, meaning they have sanctions against them because of political disagreements, and you live in that country, then you can't access things that use, use U.S. servers. Now, I could totally make a whole other video on... Why the hell uh, an embargo in one country affects people playing video games in another country? I think it's kind of stupid, but at the end of the day, these are the laws, and King's Isle has to follow them. However, the people who are getting banned are not from embargoed countries, which is why this is such a big problem. On the Wizard101 Reddit, someone from South Africa, which, as far as I know, is not an embargoed country, they basically received an email recently saying that they got no notification about the ban. They just woke up, tried to access their account, got banned, and when they reached out, they said it was because of a terms of use violation related to an embargo. And if you think that this gets a little weird, it gets even weirder. Like, it doesn't matter who you are in the Wizard101 community. This is just something that they've just done with a broad brush. There, there's a guy from Sweden who's a co-owner of one of the sites on Wizard101's website, one of their fan sites called Wizard101 Folio. And he got banned even though he's from Sweden. This is something that I was reached out to in the DMs. Again, Sweden, not a country that's embargoed. I think that there is a real issue with a lot of things here. And that's why I'm making this video. I think one problem is that, again, I'm not like, this isn't like a personal dig at anyone who works for KI support. But whoever is in charge of it, I feel like there's just way too little, there's just not enough concern put on players, especially when it comes to bans. We saw this not even like, I want to say like two months ago when people were banned, I guess, for using the discount code too many times. And then the bans got repealed after people made a lot of noise about it. Whatever the politics of an embargo and what it means for Wizard 101 players abroad is, there were, there were clearly mistakes made here. I, I, unless there weren't, and there's a way to prove it, I would say there needs to be a ban appeal process. There needs to be. Like, these people from different parts of the world that are playing Wiz, they didn't, literally, they didn't do anything wrong. And maybe it was an honest mistake. Maybe, I don't know, the IP that they thought that they were coming from, maybe they thought it was from an embargoed country and that's why they banned them. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, once they got banned, they were not able to, they were not able to get another response. They got the response that I read at the beginning of this video. That's it. That's all they were able to get. They just said, you violated terms of use. That's it. We're done. Now, I'm obviously just speculating here, and this video, unfortunately, it's hard to really prove that there's like a widespread mistake being made, but based on that Reddit post, it seems like they they base this entire ban on that one Reddit user's IP, and in the comment section of that post, he basically talked about how he was having IP issues throughout the past few months, but he logged in to King's Isle to do like trivia quizzes and stuff. So they might have picked up that he was using a random IP, maybe from an embargoed country, but he actually wasn't from that country. It's just that he was having IP issues. And who knows? I don't know if that's true or not. But if that is true, then, then he got falsely banned and now he can't reach out to King's Isle over it. Now, there's actually a couple of reasons why I'm making this video. One of them, if, if this was just a mistake, 
I just want to bring some kind of, you know, awareness for it. Maybe to make sure that your IP is not dynamic or moving or changing before logging into King's Isle. Maybe we can prevent some bans that way. The second thing, if someone did get falsely banned for this, I hope that they're aware that some of these people did get falsely banned from countries that are not affected by an embargo. But I think the most important takeaway from this whole video is that Wizard101's banning system is fundamentally flawed at the moment. With the whole MGI buyout of King's Isle and everything that's happened recently, one of the big, big takeaways from their press conference, their press releases, all of that, is that their acquisition of Wizard101 is based on making sure that a lot of people internationally can access Wizard101. I don't know exactly what the number is. It was on a press release. I, I, I think I made a video before where it was linked in the description, but I think something like 11% of their business is outside of the US. So that means a huge part of King's Isle and their future is international. That means like, you know, yeah, they've tapped into a US population. There's a lot of people in Europe in other uh, where Gamigo and where MGI is from Europe and other parts of the world where they could tap into players. But how are you going to tap into players when you don't even have a good appeal process for people that are getting banned from foreign IPs? And this is just a really, really small part of a larger problem. And it's a fact that like in the terms of use itself, King's Isle to clear all all liability they just say that if they want to ban you they can ban you no questions asked i just think that that is a horrendous horrendous rule like i get it legally why that is a thing but you can't leave people in dead end bans if they might be falsely banned that's just completely incompatible with a vision where wizard one one grows like you can't have that system in place it's just it's not a good idea <laughs> And this isn't, I don't want this to be like, you know, the opportunity that everyone takes to be like, you know what, man, King's Isle sucks. I hate King's Isle. The people, are, no, that's not what this is. This is just bringing awareness to a, a, to a potential mistake that they made. But also like, I, we're all on the same team here. I think the more people that get banned off of this game, the worse it is for the future of this game. You know, I just think that's like, and, and here's the thing, guys, there are legal repercussions for probably, I assume there are legal repercussions. I assume there's like, if you let people uh, play your game from embargoed countries, I think there there could be fines. I don't know if there's like a Texas thing or there's a US thing, or if it's like related to the acquisition of King's Isle from Gamigo. It could be anything, but there's probably like fines that are given to you if you know, there's an embargo. So they're just following rules, trying to avoid some consequences. That's fine. But when there is a mistake that is made, there is no way to fix it for the people that are falsely affected. That's the root of the issue. It's not, oh, these people are bad. These people are good. It's just, this is a really messed up situation that needs to get better, especially if there's going to be more and more people internationally that are getting access to this game and they don't have a good appeal process. This is something that I've always wanted. You know, I'm not going to complain about a problem without giving a solution. I just think that they need like a board of people that are involved in ban appeals. And I think some of those people should be community members. I'm not talking about content creators. I'm not talking about YouTubers. Try to pick a representative group of players that have, you know, that, that have some sort of reputation that is like, you know, not awful and have them maybe give people a second chance, especially if they got banned. I know tons of people that would volunteer for it if they could, if there are some qualifications that they could, I think that they should do that. Especially considering the fact that, you know, bans are pretty, they're, 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 not, they're not temporary, they're very permanent. And considering it over Christmas, what happened to the discount bans, I just think that these kind of things are happening so often. Maybe it's a sign that King's Isle and Wizard 101 in general, they're growing, and maybe it's a good problem to have, but this problem needs a solution. But yeah, guys, those are just my two cents. Um... I think the takeaway is if you do use like a VPN or something, don't use it while playing Wiz just in case the IPs are the reason people are getting banned. I've heard that this affects people in Sweden, Malaysia, the US, and other places including South Africa as we saw. So this is like a widespread thing. This isn't just like, you know, a few people. And I hope that King's Isle, after they fix it, they talk about exactly why it happened so that we actually know. I feel like we also should know what's going on in this decision because it seems like they try to keep it kind of on the DL, which I just don't think is a good strategy ever, because you're just gonna have more questions. I have questions. Everyone has questions. But yeah, y'all, let me know. What do you guys think about this whole thing? I thought this was just a weird-ass thing, and I thought I would make a video about it. I don't know if I'm barking up the wrong tree. Maybe I'm wrong completely, and maybe these were all like bands that were supposed to happen but i feel like there were mistakes made drop a like if you enjoyed leave a sub if you're new join the discussion in the comment section there's tons of links in the description including my twitch my twitter my discord my instagram and of course my patreon and as always if somebody has not told you that you're awesome today they doing something wrong so stay awesome 
Andrea. Ja, ja.